Hey guys, this is Danny with Patrick Adair Supplies. This month we're gonna be making our Sapphire Storm September ring box. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this month's box. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is a um, pigment scooper. Uh, this isn't the exact one that you're gonna get, it's one very similar to this, but it's just a really handy tool to mix your glow powder and your color pigments. So that's gonna be really nice to have. Um, this month we're using our blue glow powder. This is just a really nice bright blue glow. So the whole time you're, you're charging this up, it's gonna be rewarded with a really nice blue glow. Okay, let's go ahead and get into what's gonna be inside of our ring. So the first thing we have is our diamond dust, which is just a really fine diamond. And then as you put it in your ring, it mostly is gonna be there for sentimental reasons or just because it's cool to have diamonds in your ring. You're not really gonna be able to see it a whole lot, but you might catch it every once in a while. Next up we have water sapphire. So this one's cool. Um, it's kind of opaque, so you'll really be able to see the color pigment inside of your ring as well as have a really nice kind of depth to your ring, have some clear spots. I think water sapphire looks really nice in these rings. Next up, we're gonna have some meteorite shavings. So these are really cool to work with. They just add um, kind of just a reflective element in your ring. So as it catches the light, it'll just shine back and cause kind of just a cool effect with the light. So they're fun to work with. And it's meteorite, so it's really cool to have in your ring to be able to see, say you have real life meteorite. All right, the last thing we have is sapphire. This is just a really nice blue sapphire. So it's gonna look really cool in your ring. It's gonna contrast a little bit with our color pigments this month. So you're gonna have some really nice dark blues and grays and some blacks occasionally. So it's really cool to work with. I think it looks nice when it catches the light. It's kind of like a mix between the sapphire, the water sapphire, and kind of a lapis lazuli almost. Um, so it's a cool one to work with. And then we're gonna be working with a tungsten ring band this month. So tungsten is awesome, really scratch resistant, really hard to break, um, just a great ring, really nice and hefty feeling. Um, and then we have our two color pigments this month. We have our gunmetal gray, which kind of comes out as a charcoal color when you mix it in with the glow powder. And then we have a bright sapphire. And this is just a really nice bright blue. So it's gonna have a cool contrast between the blue and the, and the gray, which is why we named this the Sapphire Storm, because it's gonna have some kind of stormy effects as well as some blue. And that's what we have this month. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first thing that we are going to do today is mix our bright sapphire color pigment and our blue glow powder. Um, we're going for a really nice vibrant blue, so we're gonna use a bit more pigment than usual. It's still not a ton, but I used, I think, two or three scoops instead of one or two. So just add a little bit extra of the pigment just to make sure we have a really good blue. Next, we're going to mix our gunmetal and our blue glow powder. This is where our storm comes in. We want this to be a pretty dark gray, almost reminiscent of when a storm is breaking out over your, your hometown. You know, when the sky is just really dark, the clouds are really nice and gray. That's what we're going for with this color, is just a really dark, stormy gray. Okay, we're gonna add our diamond dust to the bright sapphire color pigment. Um, I'm doing this just in hopes that the diamond dust will catch the light just every once in a while to add a nice sparkle to the ring. It's really not gonna be something super obvious or present all the time, but just occasionally when you catch the light just right, you will see that extra little sparkle in the ring, which I think will add just a cool little element. It'll be something fun that you can just catch every once in a while in the right light and setting. Our first step in inlaying this ring is going to be to inlay the water sapphire. 
So what I do is just add a little dollop of the thick CA adhesive and then I inlay the piece of water sapphire and lock it in with some of our gunmetal gray color pigment. Um, as I inlay each of these materials, I kind of try and vary the distance between them and side to side on the ring just so that they are really consistent throughout the entire ring but there is a little bit of um, randomization or um, it doesn't look super like machine built. It, it still has that hand built feel where everything's just a little bit different and a little bit off. As we add more and more inlay materials to the ring, sometimes they're gonna be really close together, almost touching. Sometimes there will be a little bit more space between each piece, and that's just fine. That's actually the look that I'm going for. I like that natural look where sometimes things are just a little bit off, where things just don't look 100% planned. Okay, once we have all of our sapphires inlaid, what we're gonna do is use our medium CA adhesive, and we're gonna do a thin layer over the entire ring. So I usually just add a little dab of this medium CA adhesive on each piece of inlay material. So I'll go through and just kind of put a little bit on each piece of sapphire, and then we're gonna go through and do a layer of our gunmetal gray, just to make sure that each piece of inlay material is really enveloped in that gray. Um, I just want to make sure that there's kind of like a bubble around each piece of sapphire. All right, once we've wet the entire ring down with our super thin CA adhesive, go ahead and sprinkle in meteorite shavings. Um, I like the look of these and how random they are as you sprinkle them in. The hope with this is that it will look a lot like a lightning storm so that as the light catches each piece of meteorite shaving, it'll just look like a lightning bolt or a lightning strike. So I think this is gonna be a really cool effect and I really like to have meteorite in my rings. I think it looks really nice. Once we're happy with the amount of meteorite shavings we have in our ring, go ahead and cover the entire ring with our bright sapphire blue color pigment. All right, now is where it gets a little bit tricky. We're going to be um, jumping back and forth between our gunmetal gray and our bright sapphire blue. So what I do is I wet the entire ring down and then I take the gunmetal gray and I just add splashes of it throughout the entire ring. Um, depending on how strong you want the gray to be, you could just do the entire next layer in gunmetal, but I just want it to be a little bit more broken up. So I'm doing just splashes of the gunmetal gray and then cut, filling in the rest of the, the area that's wet with the bright sapphire blue. And then I blow off the excess and wet the whole ring down again and just repeat that process. So we're just going to add a little bit more gunmetal gray, splash around the ring, fill in the rest with the bright sapphire. And you're going to go ahead and keep doing that until you've filled in the entire inlay channel. Uh, once you're happy with how full your inlay channel is, go ahead and spray that with a little bit of accelerator and then allow it to cure. Um, I usually wait about 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure that it's entirely hardened all the way through because it really sucks to have the exterior of the ring hard and then as soon as you start dremeling, start ripping things out of there. So I usually let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes even with the accelerator. All right, this next step is gonna require a lot of patience. So sapphire is a pretty hard material, so as we're dremeling it down, it's gonna take a lot of time, and honestly, a lot of your dremel bits. Um, the sapphire is just a little bit harder to get through, so as you do this step, just make sure you're being patient, you're not trying to rush it, because if you heat it up too much, you could rip the material out of the CA adhesive, 
and then it's stuck because you have to figure out how to fill a hole in your ring. So just make sure you're being patient, using plenty of water and plenty of Dremel bits, just to make sure that you do sand all the way through these pieces. Once you have the ring flush, um, I went ahead and did a quick 220 sand. I do this just to ensure that the whole ring is flush and that there's not any air pockets hiding just below the surface. And to just make sure that I'm happy with how things are looking before we seal it all in and finish up the ring. All right, once we've dried our ring off after that quick 220 sand. Gonna go ahead and do a layer of our super thin CA adhesive just to fill in any cracks and crevices and holes. That way the whole ring is just a solid piece. Um, once you've done that layer of super thin, go ahead and hit it with a little bit of accelerator. Remember not to use too much here because if you do, you could cause some air bubbles to form on the surface. And those are kind of annoying to deal with and hard to get rid of. It's possible, but it just adds a little bit extra time and work to making your ring. All right, so we're gonna do our sanding now, and I always start with 220 grit sandpaper, then move on to 500, then 1000, and then 1200. I find, the, I find that the combination of these four sandpapers allows me to get a nice even finish, as well as get a nice polish on it later on. So we're gonna start off with our 220 grit, and as I'm sanding, I'm using plenty of water to make sure that I'm washing off any of those bits and particles of glue and material that we're sanding off. And then occasionally I will switch direction on the lathe. So I'll have it spinning forward and then backwards just to make sure that we're getting a really nice even finish. If you go all in one direction, sometimes you'll end up with these kind of like micro scratches in the inlay. They're hard to see, but they are there if you catch the light with them. So just make sure you're switching back and forth occasionally so that you have a really nice even finish. All right, our final step is to add our diamond paste. Um, I think that this step is crucial to make sure that you have a good polish. The diamond paste will polish the inlay and it will also help work out any scratches that you did manage to put into the tungsten. If you did put a giant deep scratch, it won't take care of that, but it should take care of any scratches that formed from our sanding on the tungsten. All right, I'm really happy with how this ring turned out. I think it portrays kind of a stormy summer night. Um, we have a, a pretty nice deep blue sky with these really nice dark gray clouds and the occasional burst of lightning coming in from our meteorite shavings. And I just think that this ring looks really cool. And I'm glad that we were able to incorporate so much sapphire with our water sapphire and with our just classic blue sapphire. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. I'm really happy with how this ring turned out. Um, remember to like and subscribe and join our Facebook group.